that you have come to us we did not go to you that you chose us we did not choose you that you brought us forth and you are not one that we brought forth you but you brought yourself forth unto us having brought us forth and thereby we know you and even as we the scripture says face to face in this last hour though we have not seen you personally we know the prophet has and we know this is that hour of perfection and we thank you for it we we rejoice in it, Lord, and may our rejoicing not be momentary, or may it not even be static, but may it be uh, moment by moment, day by day, until we come into the place of immortality, and may it always be increasing, Lord, even as we know it can and should be, piling word upon word, and that life coming forth more and more. What a wonderful promise. And what a wonderful time we have together. Bless us tonight in your word. We know you will because that's why we are here. And you have come, Lord, to give us that blessing of the word, that life in there. We appreciate that. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> now, last Sunday we took the entire service, except for reading a tiny little portion, uh, Brother Brandon's message on leadership to give you a lot of backgrounding. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to read that portion again. It's on page one. It's my book is paragraph five. Brother Brandon says, we want to say we've had a wonderful time coming across the hill and the meetings. That's coming from Yuma, Arizona. And then previous to that from uh, Shreveport, Louisiana. Last night we had a wonderful time up there with the brethren at the other chapter. And, and so had a great crowd out and wonderful attendance. <clears throat> the people so reverent and nice, it makes me feel real, real good to be a part of the full gospel of businessmen. So, all right, we find him here, here talking uh, to the businessmen who actually set this meeting up for him, mostly through Brother Carl uh, Williams. Uh, most of the people in the full gospel businessmen actually have come to hate Brother Branham, it's a lot, literally hate him. Uh, they do not want him around because, of course, he puts a damper on them by coming against tongues evidence as the initial evidence, the Holy Ghost. And when a man of his caliber with what he has can come against them with what they got, looks pretty poor. You know, it looks like you've grown a cucumber that's about two inches long and the one in the fairest about, well, have you ever seen these cucumbers like about like this? Well, they are there. I've seen beans about that long. Doc, uh, <clears throat> what's his name down there in Florida had them. And uh, when, when you see there's his, uh, like small fruit on the vine, uh, they're not going to be happy that this man can come along with vindicated fruit, which they refuse to recognize, so they don't like him. And uh, that's par for the course. Uh, there never was a prophet that anybody did like. Now that's in the scripture. It said, what prophet have they not abused? What have they not tormented? Which one have they not killed? <clears throat> they saw the Isaiah part. And... Uh, they both crucified and killed the Lord Jesus Christ, who was the prophet. So um, <clears throat> they're not very uh, uh, inclined to uh, even want to be there under his ministry. But of course, uh, this is one of their meetings. And so quite a few came out, but I believe the ones that came that were heartfelt were people like me and others of my kind who went to that meeting. Now he says, I have a message I feel from God. <clears throat> well, uh, that's a nice little way of putting it. He knows that they feel they've got a message. He knows that they feel because of their money and their strong support for some of these great luminaries, Oral Roberts and uh, Brother Hicks and uh, Brother Osborne and these men, they really feel and uh, here's a man here who put all the rest in a bag, will make them look like two bits worth of dog meat alongside of him. And they just think he's a little Kentucky hillbilly that's too big for his britches. And you should look to these great guys. Well, let's continue. <clears throat> it's a little odd to some people, but I can't help being any more than just than what I am. See, I know that, yeah. And I don't mean to be different. Why you bothered being different? See, now watch what he says. I'm different. But it has nothing to do with me as a person. It's the changing time. <clears throat> All right. What
What's the changing time? The building of the fivefold ministry based upon the vindicated teaching of Paul the Apostle builds an edifice right up to the capstone which is Christ which will be a glorious church without spot, without wrinkle, which will be fully sanctified by the washing of the water of the Word, we're in his life, ready for the waiting supper. <clears throat> so, you're right back where I mentioned in Scripture. You can call this a house. You can call this a field. Just like Jesus called the uh, true and the false, true trees, false trees, uh, sheep, wolves. In other words, we are not limited <clears throat> in our ability to choose what we'll really describe under the right conditions at the right time, exactly what is in the mind of God and being fulfilled. So Brother Branham said, as long as you're building the wall, one straight way, it's all fine. The bricklayers can go right down the road. But when you have to turn the corner, you're building a house. I'd be building a fence. That's where things change. <clears throat> now, we're not building a wall. We're building a house. We read that in 1 Corinthians 3. You see, so these turns have to come. They say, what turns? What turn? Isn't the word always the same? Isn't God always the same? What turns? Well, they forget. In the first church age, they took a turn for the worse. Just like the Jews say. If Moses had to made a left turn instead of a right turn, I think that's the way it was. We'd have had the oil instead of the Arabs. <clears throat> If the man who was sick and made a turn for the better, he wouldn't have died. Now, these people cannot understand a turn. See? Now, I realize that they you think they're doing good turns. <clears throat> and they took a turn for the better in the sense that they really understand, as few people ever have or done. These are the same yesterday, today, and forever, and the Word of God never changes, and we've got the evidence, bless God, we speak in tongues. That's in the Bible, make no doubt about it. <clears throat> so therefore, we are the real, really elect. <clears throat> yep, we're the ones cutting a swath. I got news for them, God never did cut a swath. He cut a lot of necks and the blood flew. How big a swath did God cut at any time in history? Now, this is where you got millions now living will never die. <coughs> Hogwash. Billions now living will die, and a few won't. So he said, we're building a house, you see, so these turns have to come. They came in the ages of Martin Luther, John Wesley, and Pentecost. <coughs> it's here again. Now, He's talking about himself, his relationship to a message. We all know that Martin Luther brought truth. We know John Wesley brought further truth. Under Pentecost, the gifts are restored. They made a big mistake, of course. They thought that this was the great baptism with the Holy Ghost, although it was the baptism with the Holy Ghost because all through the ages, people had been baptized with the Holy Ghost. Otherwise, they're not a part of the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's face it, that's 1 Corinthians 12, so we don't change it. <clears throat> hey. All right. Now he said, but I'm so thankful. No. Uh, so it's hard to turn the corners. So Brother Brown was telling you, here he's got a turn, corner to turn, and it's pretty difficult. But I'm so thankful to God, even though how rough it's been, the people have responded 100%. <clears throat> so we're very grateful to each one of you. Now, who's he talking to? Full gospel and businessmen or the people there that elect that follow the message? I cannot conceive that this man is talking to those who do not follow the message. <clears throat> I can only concede that he's very grateful for the scripture that's in his mind, wherein he knows that every single one that God gave to Jesus Christ will come in. And he said there won't be one less 
or one too many. <clears throat> and it won't be anybody but cell upon cell, which is the word. So therefore, the identification has to be as Jesus was the word. Each one of us have to be the word. And therefore, it has to be a certain defined word. Now, <clears throat> Brother Branham is speaking, of course, of leadership here. <clears throat> so, we begin reading. Now, before we open the book, let's speak to the author, if you will, just a moment while we bow our heads. Dear God, we are grateful to you, God, tonight for the privilege of knowing Jesus Christ, our Savior, your Son. You must be his Father. And Brother Branham doesn't pray like the Apostle Paul here. I wish he had. Huh? Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he said, we're, Dear God, we're grateful to you, <clears throat> being the father of a son. We're grateful to your son, Jesus Christ, the Savior, and the free pardoning of our sins, and to know that his blood is sufficient that's covered all of our sins and our iniquities. <clears throat> now, he uses two words there. In the first place, the word sin actually means to miss the mark, so as to not share in the prize. You know, Paul speaks of the prize, of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And he says, so I run not beating the air futilely. <clears throat> I don't run as one that doesn't have the ability to cross the line and get a part of that treasure to be a winner. But he said, I put every single thing behind me. Even those things I once prized, I count but dung, which is a hindrance. <clears throat> now, it's well known to sin means to miss the mark, to miss that prize. So therefore, <clears throat> we are also looking at a life that is spent without ultimate goals, without sowing discriminately, or with a purpose. Now, I can just believe here that Brother Branham, using the Scripture as he does, even the same Scriptures in mind, the same words that Jesus and Paul, the prophets and others have used, <clears throat> Brother Branham himself is thinking, of those scriptures as they lay up treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not corrupt. Also, the same scripture that says, and literally, buying up the opportunities, <clears throat> or as it says, him to know to do good and doeth it, not to him it is sin. You're missing out, you're missing the mark. All of these things I see in here where people are living a shoddy existence <clears throat> through carelessness not perhaps so much willfully, but not being aware of the times and the time, are not making or taking to themselves those things that are made available to them, <clears throat> but carelessly going down the road. Even as Brother Branham said, I'm worried because I can see these people could be careless. <clears throat> not understanding that piling word upon word is the only way you're going to get truly full of the Holy Ghost and change to immortality. And you're not going to get her running around and looking at the world and reading everything that's there and viewing everything they've got. <clears throat> Any more than you can walk two blocks and think you're going to compete in a marathon. I'm not talking to you any more than I'm talking to myself. There is a tremendous lack. <clears throat> and that lack is known as lukewarmness. And it is the going mood and mode <clears throat> of the Laodicean age. It's kind of like dropping everything in the lap of the government. <clears throat> and suddenly the money runs out. And the women who have their children on ABC, is it? <clears throat> they have a baby every year that's illegitimate, and they don't give her it. 
And you got these Kentucky hillbilly pappies running around with Cadillacs with six or seven women strung around a dozen kids or 15 or 20. <clears throat> what are they going to do? The money's gone. The Bible distinctly tells, go to the ant, thou sluggard, consider her ways and be wise. <clears throat> The Bible speaks of those sitting in folly until one day there's nothing. That's what sin is all about. <clears throat> the next is iniquity. Iniquity is going against the law. It's an illegal step that we know, as Brother Brown has said, they should know to do better <clears throat> or not do it, and they do it anyway. <clears throat> Now, he's praying that the people will come to a true righteous experience under the blood, which is the only way we can come, is through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> but the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ is 100% non-efficacious to the point where it is completely condemnatory and condemning because the people have not come to the light. <clears throat> so he's praying here, knowing that he is the man turning the corner, that he is the one given to the wise virgin who take the new message <clears throat> which alone can contain the oil, the true baptism, the true filling of the Holy Ghost, <clears throat> piling word upon word, <clears throat> which the others cannot have. Trusting, therefore, turning to the message, the true ministry, which is to bring the message of his presence, <clears throat> will now cover the two things, the Laodicean concept of lukewarmness, the bride not knowing, hoping to be understanding and doing the will of God, can now come into it. <clears throat> Therefore, having come to the light, no longer trespassing against the Word of God, working counter to it, or holding it back in unrighteousness, unbelief, but standing with it, believing it, and consequently living it. That is that portion that can be lived. <clears throat> so, the blood does do this, because the blood makes the way for it. As we've seen this time after time after time in the book of Galatians, never, never forget key scriptures, my brother, my sister. <clears throat> we want you to be able to turn to them just instantly with no problem. Galatians, the third chapter, Christ hath redeemed us, bought us back from under the curse of the law. And the curse of the law was the man that does not reside in them. <clears throat> that man is, is going to be, have debt, being made a curse for us, written, curse everyone that hangeth on a tree. Now notice that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. It tells you right there what the blood does. <clears throat> now the blood cannot do that. <laughs> except it's 100% compatible with the promise or the Word of God. Many, many people try to make the blood do what it can't do. <clears throat> the blood opens the door to the Gentiles, to you and me coming, to receiving the Holy Spirit to be sealed until the day of redemption. And at the end time, there'll be those, have they properly come under the blood, and through the Spirit, absolutely and positively, they'll be standing there for that Spirit to come in Ephesians 1, 17 to 23. Now, you might also notice in here, <clears throat> talking about the blood, in the 10th chapter of the book of Hebrews, verse 26, for if we sin willfully, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. And how can you say the blood avails if you turn down vindicated truth? I want to know. 
Now they're going, they're going to say, Brother Vail, it's not that way. Ha! Let's just wait and find out. I'm banking my life <coughs> against the lake of fire. It's not going to happen to me. <coughs> no way, shape, and form. I got word for it. But a fearful, certain, but a certain, absolute fearful looking pour of judgment and fire indignation which shall devour the adversaries. The adversaries of what? Not the sacrifice, but the truth. <coughs> Everybody screams sacrifice, and <clears throat> they don't even know what they're talking about. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two of the witnesses. Of how much sore of punishment, suppose ye shall be thought worthy of trodden underfoot the Son of God, and counted the blood of the covenant. Now it's a, not blood, it's blood of a covenant. Huh? Well, come on, isn't it, isn't it? Right. Yeah. And you don't talk about the blood. And isolated from the word. Because it was the bleeding word, Christ himself, the word that bled and died. Huh? And this is God in print. <clears throat> so, all right, we better know scripture, brother, sister. Now, years ago, this was okay. Not anymore. Of how much sore punishment? Of how much sore punishment? Do you get the picture? Hey, it says this, this guy deserves more. This guy should get more. So what happens to the harlot and her daughters? Cast into the great tribulation, then into the lake of fire. Where she gets not an eye for an eye, but she gets dished back on her four times. Now, a few people haven't read what the Roman Catholic Church did to the Protestants <clears throat> and what they did down here in South America and how they betrayed God and everybody. If you haven't done it, read some books. Now, the Protestants are no better because, you see, they've had all these years to walk in the light and they haven't done it. Where the Catholics were corralled in God's own word tells you that. They didn't break out, but the Protestants broke out. Luther, Wesley, Pentecost, and then they get hit with this and come face to face with the Son of Man ministry, God in a pillar of fire, vindicating himself absolutely <clears throat> through a prophet which is scriptural. And they turn it down. I'm asking you, how much sore punishment does this age require than any other age, all you got to do is go back and see what happened to the Jews in 70 A.D. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> people say, well, <clears throat> oh, the blood, wonderful blood. <clears throat> Absolutely. But the point is, what have they got to do with it? It says, trodden underfoot the Son of God and encountered the blood of the covenant, wherewith he was sanctified, an unholy thing. <clears throat> How do you make it an unholy thing? By making it your very own and bypassing the word and say, well, it's the blood of my covenant, hallelujah. And it's the way I got it figured out. What if you got it figured out wrong? <clears throat> Now, you're listening to me, and don't you dare take this negative. So, bless God, Brother Vail, I got it right. That's what I want to hear. Time after time, I've seen altar calls by Brother Brown, and people flock forward, and I say, why would I go forward if I got what I've already come for? <clears throat> it merely strengthens you. As so indeed it should and had get done desperate to the spirit of grace. <clears throat> In other words, to turn down the word of God is to turn down the blood, is to turn down the Holy Ghost, to turn down grace <clears throat> and every revelation <clears throat> that you and I could possibly have because we turn down that which is vindicated. All right. <clears throat> so he says here, your son for the free pardoning of our sins 
and to know His blood, that's the Son's blood, is sufficient. That's covered all of our sins and our iniquity. Now remember, it was the life of God because all that Jesus had in the beginning was God's life. <clears throat> that was that same life that took on it, the protein and whatever else is necessary to bring it forth. And as long as you've got life, and that life is absolutely contained <clears throat> in a personality or something of a... Uh, that has its own, um, what would you call it, <clears throat> species. That's all you need. If it's butterfly life, if it's chicken life, if it's a maggot life, a louse life, I don't care what it is, even a bed bug. All it needs <clears throat> are those constituents, and around that life will form that thing. Now, God set it in order. There is no doubt about it. So when we talk about His blood, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, we know that according to Acts 20 and 28 is known as the blood of God. So let's go and look at it. <clears throat> now, Brother Branham brought this to our attention. I've never seen this by any, ever, and nobody else ever said this to my knowledge. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock or which the Holy Ghost had made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. <clears throat> and Brother Branham called Jesus the blood of God, which is true because that was the life of God. A son is the life of his father. And you know, very, very carefully, you look at the firstborn in the Old Testament, he was the beginning of the father's strength, that firstborn son. Was the, was the father's strength. <clears throat> he was equal with his father. Whatever the father had was his. So we're looking at a very tremendous thing here. Remember, no person can be equal with himself. If you got equality, you got two things. A lot of people say, well, I'm going to give you the bigger half. That's completely asinine. We all say it. <clears throat> we mean we cut the thing in two. But there's no such thing as a bigger half of anything. Amen. Just can't be done. <clears throat> See? Now, they're so blotted out and put in the sea of God's forgetfulness that his bride will stand at the wedding supper, the blood perfects the bride, pure and unadulterated, to marry the Son of God. Now, is that for real, or is Brother Branham just blowing bubbles? <clears throat> Is there a genuine son of God we are going to marry, or is Brother Branham preaching two gods? Now, I can begin to reel off names here if you want now, <clears throat> which I'm not going to do it. But while they're considering that I'm preaching two gods in Africa, Australia, America, every Canada, every place else, I want them to stand beside me or come somewhere and tell me how this works out. <clears throat> and I can tell you they're not born again, though even claim to have the Spirit of God in him. It's impossible. Because you cannot identify with the Scripture until you come where Brother Branham took us under the seventh seal in Melchizedek. He came exactly as we did, except for one feature. He did not bypass the Word or Spirit body. Brother Branham called it the often we did. <clears throat> what are they going to do with Hebrews 2? Where he acknowledges on one ground we have one source. I want to know. This lets me know one thing. I can understand why eight people made the ark. <clears throat> and a tiny, tiny percentage based on that eight. <clears throat> maybe 500 to make this ark, maybe 5,000, maybe 700, 7,000, don't ask me. But let's put it this way. If 7,000 people are standing here at the time of the resurrection to be made immortal, that's a very tiny few out of five and a half billion people. It's the same as me saying to you, how would you like to settle for $7,000 when the government owes you five and a half billion? You say, what? 
I sat in the first whew, peanut chicken feet, and the chicken would starve on it. I want my five and a half billion. It's not very many, is it? <clears throat> Seven thousand out of five and a half billion. What if there's only five hundred? Is that where Brother Branagh said 1,000th of 1% 1 roughly? You mathematician, do that in a hurry. <clears throat> I won't argue one way or the other. See? Now, how we thank thee for this all-sufficiency and the faith to know we do not trust in our own merits, but in his merit alone for what he did for us. <clears throat> this man is praying having turned a corner. Oh, dear Lord, says William Branham. I look back and I see those great things of yesteryear. And Lord, I'm praying now in the spirit of yesteryear. Ah! Who's sick, you or me? Come on. Come on. You think William Branham's like you and me? Fruitcake? You think he turned the corner and says, Now, Lord, I'm just pretending I turned the corner. And my prayers and my preaching are as though I never turned the corner. <clears throat> I want to ask you a question. Was there ever a day outside of this day wherein there is all sufficiency? Well, come on. Never was. <clears throat> Scripture. 1 Corinthians 13. Ephesians 1, 17 to 23. <clears throat> Ephesians 4. Oh, about verse 7 to 16. 70 is somewhere there. <clears throat> and others. Never was a time like this. Couldn't be. Because we are standing before the tree of life. So Brother Branham says, How we thank thee for this all-sufficiency and the faith to know <clears throat> that we do not trust in our known merits, but in his merit alone for what he did for us. And I'm going to add the word now. <clears throat> not just what he did, <clears throat> but what has been done. By this great message, remember, Brother Branham said, when Adam and Eve sinned, he and his precious children had gotten into sin. He did not send an archangel or an angel or a cherubim. He himself came down so today with the book of redemption opened. <clears throat> and we at the end time, we are so grateful. We're so grateful for what? Having turned the corner. <clears throat> Do you realize that this prayer must be identified with his message on perfect faith or forget it, or William Branham in my books has lost his, what? Integrity. <clears throat> Standing before a bunch of businessmen and kowtowing? Whew, I wouldn't even do it. Don't even think the prophet would even begin to think of it. <clears throat> He'd sooner be boiled in, in oil and go through at least seven or 14 hells than ever betray his integrity. No, he's standing right here. Now, <clears throat> we're going to keep reading. And this part of the prayer may seem a little strange. Thank you for the success that these brethren had overseas in the countries over there where they're hungering and thirsting for God. I pray, Lord, that if they go back again, that these children that they brought forth into the kingdom will be grandmothers and grandfathers of children that they bring in also, granted father. Now that sounds like a very strange prayer, and that would sure give me pause for thought at this time too. <clears throat> because let's face it, when he preached, when Bose was there, the end time evangelism, it certainly, in my recollection, didn't have a thing to the old, do with the old line message unless you're looking at the fact that there could be foolish virgin come forth because they don't have the vessels that can contain the oil. 
And remember, the oil is only in the Word. It is no place else. <clears throat> so when you talk about latter rain, the only time a latter rain can ever come that's the real, genuine latter rain. Now, there's a latter rain, the Word of God manifested in power in Pentecost in Brother Branham's great ministry. <clears throat> but the real, genuine can only come after the teaching rain to bring what was taught into full fruition. And it's called the harvest rain. And a harvest rain means there's a harvest. So your brother Bear, what if there's no harvest and a harvest rain? Don't be ridiculous. You're trying to tell me that God's word is, is void and empty? <clears throat> no way, shape, and form. So he said, all right, the success these brethren had overseas, what success did they have? The people hungering and thirsting for God. That is very, very true. <clears throat> All right. What if they're given the wrong word? Which at that time, the majority of them, no doubt, could have been given the very wrong word. While he's praying that these people, at least in turning to the kingdom, will be qualified to come into a position evidently down the road. Now, Brother Branham made a statement. The heathen have the gospel preached to them in the money. And don't even dare to ask me what it means. <clears throat> I haven't got a clue. Oh, maybe it'll come to me something a little later on. There's something there coming up. But as we look at this particular scripture, Brother Branham at least is commending these people for having gone out with the message. As he himself said, people do not go to church to become worse. They go there to become better. And we saw the Apostle Paul say, many people go to church evidently thinking they're going to be better, but the frame of mind there is, they are in away from the Word of God. <clears throat> they go away in worse shape than they came. So both of these things are possible. He's praying that now, as I look at it this way, I would say he's praying earnestly that these men here who are devoting their time and their energy and some honestly giving their money will be able to have some kind of fruit that is able to stand. Now, if this went from the grand great-grandmothers right on down, you've got three generations of people. <clears throat> what could happen in three generations? under true preaching of the Word, turning this Word loose the best they know how, doing their best to convert people to Christ. And I'm not saying they, that they don't come to the place of salvation. You would therefore find <clears throat> that those nations that have that will have less bloodshed, less famine, less everything. Now look at your maps and what is going on in Africa. And I'm not against the black people, but the point is what went on in Somali, what's going on in Rwanda. You go into Egypt, what's going on there? You go to Iran, you go to all those places, and you're going to find where Christianity is not, except in the teeniest, teeniest form, they are already going through, as it were, a mini tribulation. <clears throat> but you look where the real gospel is. You're going to find a big difference. And the real gospel is under Protestantism, where at least they say, look, here's the word, do something with the word. <clears throat> we're going to preach and tell you. Now, how many of these people are coming in at the end time and they will be guests at the wedding... Uh, I beg your pardon. Now, I don't know the first thing, guests at the wedding supper in the air. But you get in there over the, after the white throne, there could be countless, there just billions and billions of people <clears throat> that can come in. And as Brother Branham said, he said to me personally, in 1964, win all the souls you can which simply means the winning of souls, you are trusting they'll come to the Lord Jesus, believe for their salvation and their sanctification, at least to a degree. The water baptism, though these guys are not going to preach a correct baptism. you got a real problem here. <clears throat> How far will they go? They can go all the way to sanctification, but they'll never come into the true baptism with the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> well, maybe one or two will down the road. So will they be bride? No. Whatever these will be cannot be bride in contradistinction to these who are with William Branham having turned the corner. Now, if these men do not believe in turning a corner, how will their converts believe in turning a corner? Well, Brother Branham could be praying, at least the converts could begin to see something to turn a corner. <clears throat> because after all, he came out of, what did he come out of? Catholicism? What did I come out of? About everything under high heaven. Finally end up with the Pentecost of leave them go to the Baptist. I don't know whether I did myself a favor or not. <clears throat> I don't suppose I did. But anyway, we're looking at these things here right in his prayer. Now he said, bless us together. Now there you are. At least Lord gives some blessing as we're hearing of people tonight. 
And may the Holy Spirit, now watch, <clears throat> give to us the things we have need of. <clears throat> now remember, Brother Branham did never begin to tell people they needed gifts as though they needed gifts. No, you can have gifts. <clears throat> but you can have problems. What we have need of. <clears throat> now what do the people have need of? If he's turned a corner and he's bringing a message, then the people have need of the message. See, because the blood stands there efficacious. The Holy Ghost stands there efficacious. The Word of God stands there efficacious. But you've got to get them together. <clears throat> Absolutely. That's combined in one person. And in that one person, that makes perfect deliverance. All right. Give us the things we have need of. Close our mouths <clears throat> to the things that we should not say. Now, that's anything that's against the message. Close them out. Open our hearts to receive what you tell us. <clears throat> now, you see, anybody can read the Bible and say, God's telling me. What about old Eve? The devil opened the Bible to her. He said, Doesn't, has God said? Yep, God did say. <clears throat> well, did he say uh, you shouldn't eat of the tree in case you die? Yep, she said that. Then he began adding. Now, the point is you can take anything that God said and pervert it. So what does he say? Close our mouths to the things we should not say. He's talking about himself. Open our hearts. He's talking about them because his heart's already open. <clears throat> to receive what you would tell us. Granted, Father, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now, there's your little prayers. I see it here. <clears throat> and I see the main one up here for you and me. I see down here all the encouragement he can give. But the encouragement up in the first part of the prayer, in my estimation, cannot come down unto them unless they turn the corner. <clears throat> so, all right. He then could be saying, I'm trusting, Lord, that these people will turn the corner. Then they'll go back and tell these people that came to Christ, I've got something more to tell you. Now, my question is, do you and I believe for one minute they ever went back? Maybe somebody did. I'm very skeptical at this point. <clears throat> very skeptical. Because, you see, I know they were turning him down more and more. But I love his prayer here. Close our mouths to the things we should not say. Why? Because they go in your ears, come on down here, and can pop out again. And if they pop out, they go in your ears, come down here, and if they pop out again, they're that much bigger. <clears throat> it's just like a habit. The more you do it, the harder to break it. You've got to start some other path. And then he said, open our hearts to receive what you would tell us. What, what, what did he tell us? Based upon, thus saith the Lord, he had the, he had the message of this hour, the opening of the seven seals, the seven thunders, and every single thing was there left to us to put us in a rapture. Okay. <clears throat> now let's turn to the Bible for a little text, and I'd like to speak on a while tonight. It's found in Mark chapter 10. A few years ago when I would speak, I wouldn't even have to write a note. I could remember it. I didn't have to take a pair of glasses to read it out of the Bible. But since I passed 25 now twice, and so a little kind of hard for me to do as I used to do, it's like an old worn-out car I'm still running. Uh -huh. I want to go on chugging along till I go to the scrap heap to be molded over again. That's the promise. That's the resurrection. <clears throat> Come back, William Branham. St. Mark, the 10th chapter, beginning with the 21st verse I want to read. Let's get to the 17th first, rather. And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeling down to him and asked him, saying, Good Master, what shall I do to inherit that I may inherit eternal life? <clears throat> All right, we got the question. And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, and that is God. <clears throat> now, we understand that Jesus was the prophet. He was also a prophet. Now, does every prophet speak everything as thus saith the Lord, or can he be conversational <clears throat> in his speech with others. So, having asked the question, we will go back and look at John chapter 14, and we will ask the question. When this young man came to Jesus and asked that question, <clears throat> was Jesus speaking as in John 14, 
or was this strictly conversational? Now, Jesus said in verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If you had known me, you should have known my Father also. And henceforth you know him and have seen him. And the, Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father that sufficeth us. And Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long with you, and yet thou hast not known me, Philip? He that has seen me hath seen the Father. Now why are you saying, show us the Father? You've already seen him. Believest thou not that I am in the Father, the Father in me? And the words that I speak, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doesn't only talk. He does the works which lets you know that it's got to be God's word I'm giving you, God himself. <clears throat> this is not conversational. <clears throat> Over here in Mark, I say it's conversational. Brother Branham had conversations. People took it to be, thus saith the Lord. So if he said, well, I'm going to come back and have a steak dinner with you, they said, oh, he's got to rise from the dead now and have a steak dinner. <clears throat> One day, and sort of like jest, he said, you got to find daughter, i got to find son, or when i got to find daughter, you got to find son, they ought to get married. The man was certain that that man, that boy, should marry Rebecca. No, not, not it. Why, Rebecca wouldn't marry that fellow, whoever he was, on a silver platter, and, well, you, that wouldn't even do it. See, now, there's lots of things that are conversational, and I'm bringing this out on purpose. There are other things the prophet says are positively, thus saith the Lord. Now, when it comes 100%, thus saith the Lord, that is the word of the hour that the prophet must bring. Now, you notice Jesus is more conversational here, but on the other hand, he's also the Son of God. Also, God is indwelling him. And so he says here, Jesus said, why do you call me good? <clears throat> there is none good but one, and that is God. Now, he's checking him out a little bit here, almost the same as he said to, to Philip here, he that has seen me has seen the Father. He's saying here, there's nobody good but God, and you're calling me good. Do you recognize that God is in me? <clears throat> Do you recognize that? Now, if this boy had understood what a real prophet was and understood what we're looking here in John 14, he might have had a different reaction, though I'm quite sure he wouldn't have because he turns it down. He saw something, perhaps just looking in the face of Jesus. He knew something was good there. But Jesus, anyway, <clears throat> literally calls his hand. For the young man said, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Now, he's right on the spot here. Are you willing to take me in the stead of God? Are you willing to stand here and let me speak for God? Because that's what I'm going to do anyway. But this is conversational, just the same, because he's not saying <clears throat> these words as he said to Philip. You understand what I'm saying? There's an impact in both places, but we sort of keep them separate. Now, thou knowest the commandments. How do you know? Well, the young man was a Jewish boy, an Israelite, bound to know the commandments. Now watch what he said. Do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, defraud not, honor thy father and mother. He doesn't say one thing about worshiping God, does he? Which is the first and great commandment. And he answered, said, I master, all these things have I observed from my youth. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him, and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way and sell whatever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come take up thy cross and follow me. Now there's his big sin right there. <clears throat> that was his sin right there. That was sin, not iniquity. Iniquity would have been up here. Did you commit adultery? Yep. Did you kill? Yep. Did you steal? Yep. Did you lie? Yep. Did you fraud? Yep. Did you hate your family? Yep. <clears throat> That's iniquity there. This is sin down here. See? He could <clears throat> do certain things, but he didn't. He could have rowed the boat. Instead, he threw the oars in the boat and drifted with the current. See? Now, Jesus loved him. He said, take up your cross. Now, and he was sad at that saying, and he went away grieved, <clears throat> for he had great possessions. Now, remember, Brother Branham preached different sermons on this man. He preached a sermon on him as the young man that came like we see here. He preached him as the old man, the rich man who had all these barns and yet not enough barns to contain his crops. That was that man. <clears throat> then he saw the rich man in Hades. He said it's the same person. All the way through, growing grosser and grosser. In other words, <clears throat> he could have used his money <clears throat> for the purpose of the gospel. 
feeding the hungry, not just throwing it away. Clothing people that really need clothes. The trouble is today, people don't know who needs what. And I'm going to tell you one thing. No person is obligated to give anybody anything if that person can get it for himself. Now you can help him. <clears throat> Over a hump a few times. But people must be responsible. And when God said, and it's just like the commandment. Brother Brandon said, be ye perfect. He said, if God commanded, God made away from it. If God commands everybody to work, then God himself must have seen that people can work. <clears throat> don't try to make up in the millennium. Your brother Brandon said, you don't go to heaven and waft around the cloud. You're going to work. That's good. Work is good for you. Now he said, the Lord bless the reading of his word. Now we're going to speak tonight on a subject of which I want my text to be, follow me <clears throat> and my subject, leadership. So this is very clever. <clears throat> I see in here, I don't see a dubious person, Brother Branham, trying to get one of the people. I just see here Brother Branham so fantastically wonderful in how he can stand before the people with the perfect message. And what does he say? The subject is follow, he said, follow me. <clears throat> the, no, the text is follow me. And the subject is leadership. And you'll find in the vision beyond the curtain of time, they said, you, the man said beside him, the angel, you were a leader. So he's saying right here, <clears throat> I'm going to preach a message tonight. And it's on a subject <clears throat> of follow me, I beg your pardon, leadership, and it is to follow me. So therefore, follow me and leadership are equal <clears throat> concerning the same person. You say, why couldn't he say that? The same as Paul, follow me as I follow Christ. And Paul did not follow Christ except on the basis of that word, and neither can anybody else. You say, well, I'm born again. How do you know? And turn down the word? Oh, come on. That's the most ridiculous thing in the world. I just read it from Scripture and showed you there's no way it can be done. <clears throat> Go to John 3, 16 to 18. You'll find the same thing. Now, now it's strange, but I thought maybe today in praying, and I've been so long and each night write down the line on the message that I have. Notice that. He said, I haven't failed to preach the message every night. The message the Lord gave me to speak on. I thought tonight over in this new chapter, that's 10 of Mark, I would approach it, that's the message, <clears throat> from a different standpoint. That's plain English right there. And many times we have talked on this, called it the rich young ruler. <clears throat> All right. Now he's talking about leadership. And he knows the full gospel of businessmen said, the preachers haven't done it, the churches haven't done it, we're taking over. <clears throat> what does that mean? Are they taking big brooms or cattle probs? Prod no, they're getting up usurping the authority in the pulpit and the preachers are falling for it because these guys represent money. And oh boy, the preachers are like some money. We get these rich guys coming in, boy. That's like give us the tools, we'll do the job. Hogwash. You can take $50 trillion. You'll never turn the world to Christ. You'll turn it to hell. What are these guys talking about? You're not even fit to be in this prophet's company. <clears throat> no wonder that one of the pillar fire says, depart from me. Out. I never knew you. You say you had fellowship? <clears throat> you say you worship? I never knew you. Tell me when did it happen? See, these are sobering thoughts. The Lord gave me this message tonight. This rich young ruler. <clears throat> All right. The rich young ruler. Let's just look at what Brother Branham didn't say. <clears throat> Mark 10. All right. The young man in 22 is grieved and he turns away. And Jesus in 23 looked around about and said to his disciples, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? And the disciples were astonished at his words. Oh, they thought the kingdom of God was rich, lush. Ho, ho, Solomon in all his glory would be even multiplied more glorious in the great kingdom. 
Like everybody talks about Israel sucking the breast of the Gentiles. Find me where Brother Branham put that in the millennium. Could they be doing it now? Huh? Well, think and sit and think about it. I can ask you questions. You ask me a lot of questions. <coughs> I'll ask you a question. Think about it. This thing rumbles around here. That's okay. <coughs> Wrap it in something. All right. <coughs> But Jesus answered again and said then unto them, Children, little kids, oh my juvenile little babies. Didn't he tell them the foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nip, but the Son of Man hath nowhere to lay his head? He said, Listen, little kids, how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God? <clears throat> Revelation 18, we'll go to later. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Now, whether the eye of the needle was a little tiny gate that the, that the camels had to kneel down and wiggle their way through, I don't know, and I'm not interested. But I can tell you one thing. The same Lord said, why? He said, you, uh, <clears throat> you want to pick the, uh, what is that, the eye of the other fellow when you got a little... A big, big, uh, you know, what the, the saying literally amounts to. Why do you want to get a toothpick out of his eye when you got a saw log in your own eye? You know, that's what I'm looking at. <clears throat> and they were astonished out of measure. Who in the world then could be saved? You know, that's a stupid question. How many rich men did those people know? If they tried to sneak into somebody, some rich man's court, they'd have been booted out. Well, cheer up, children. We're all stupid. <clears throat> well, I'm going to blame them. Who can be saved? Well, Jesus went along with them. He looked upon them and said, With men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God all things are possible. Now, notice Peter. I don't think he had any more than a handful of beans to eat. According to Brother Branham, he was the son of a very poor fisherman, the old boy that knew the Lord. Lo, we have left all and followed thee. Boy, have we made a sacrifice. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't have to leave much to follow the Lord. I can tell you that. That's not, these are human. It's okay. I'm not going to make fun at them. <clears throat> Jesus answered and said, Truly I send you, there is no man hath left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother. What about? Or wife even. Or children or lands for my sake and the gospels. <clears throat> But he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time, houses, brethren, sisters, mothers, children, lands, didn't say wives, with persecutions, and in the world to come eternal life. <clears throat> He's telling you, there is no way that man can outgive God, and this guy fooled himself into thinking if he gave away all he had, he wouldn't come up with a whole lot more to give that away to. That's in the book of Corinthians. <clears throat> you have all sufficiency for all things if you do right by your giving. And that is, let him the steal stole no more, but rather let him labor with his hands, doing that which is good, is he the, that he may have to give to him that hath to the poor, him that hath not. <clears throat> it doesn't say that earning money is like Wesley said. And the old guy sat in his church and Wesley preached for about 15 minutes and get all you can. And then he went for 15 minutes on, save all you can. The guy said, amen, amen. And then Wesley hit and give all you can. He said he done spoiled it and walked out. <coughs> <laughs> That's supposed to be a true story. And I wouldn't be surprised it is. <coughs> yep. Now, that's a rich young leader. Okay. Let's go and take a look at money, 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 money. <clears throat> At the end time, James, the fifth chapter, go to now, you rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. <clears throat> What's that? Great tribulation, without a doubt. Your riches are corrupted, your garments are moth-eaten. 
Nacon don't know it. Your gold and silver is cankered. The rust of them shall be witness against you. You know, you know, gold doesn't rust, but it does here. And shall eat your flesh as it were fire. You have heaped treasures together for the last days. Ooh, my. Oh, these billionaire trillionaires. Behold, the hire of the laborers are reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud. <clears throat> That's a big pension funds and all. Cry it. And the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of a harvest. Now, God standing by there is the great harvester himself. Behold, the hire of the laborers. I read that. <clears throat> Ye have lived in pleasure on the earth and have been wanton. <clears throat> you know, years ago when men made great sums of money, they knew they were responsible to create jobs to give to people because they knew their wealth came from this land that they positively did not create. <clears throat> like I said a while ago, our government's giving away billions in gold <clears throat> from a stupid act. Like this is grant signed to get people to mine. They're not even going to get a royalty on it. <clears throat> Old Eberhardt in Canada during Depression, he had enough brains to know that the, the oil in the soil belonged to the people and the trees belonged to the people because they came from God as a free gift. He said, from now on, you'll pay on stumpage. From now on, you'll pay so much on a barrel of oil. <clears throat> so he just took some money from the guys, and he did a good thing. He was taxing things the way they should have been taxed. You know, the Bible's not against taxes, just against illegal taxes. We're supposed to pay taxes. My Bible says to pay taxes, so don't let's not grump about it. <clears throat> you need tax to keep law and order. The only trouble is we, we pay, we've now paid it to disrupt law and order. But you, you got to pay taxes. <clears throat> See, now it says in here, you have condemned and killed the just, and he doth not resist you. You get a big enough drug cartel, they'll kill everybody <clears throat> and get free in the courts. <clears throat> and if you're a minority, you got a good chance of getting free. Law doesn't count anymore. Get, get smart. There's only one law, brother, sister. And you and I better stick with it and that is our guarantee. Be patient, therefore, brethren, under the coming of the Lord, his presence. Behold, the husbandman, that's God himself, waits for the precious fruit of the earth. That's a resurrection. Hath long patience for it until he received the early and latter rain. Be also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth near. And grudge not one against another, brethren, be not, lest you be condemned. Behold, the judge stands at the door. <clears throat> there you are. There's where your money's going to go. Let's take another picture. We go over here in Revelation, the 13th chapter. I don't have to read it. <clears throat> you can't buy or sell. <clears throat> then look at the, look at the big the big thing that's coming up in, in, in without the mark of the beast. It's all money, money. Look at the Revelation 18. Boy, that's a that's a killer right there. <clears throat> Notice where it says in verse 9: The kings of the earth who have committed fornication, live deliciously with her, shall bewail her and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off. Of the or torment, saying, Alas, alas, thy great city Babylon, that mighty city, for one hour is thy judgment come. <clears throat> you know, that could well mean the end of the great tribulation when this whole thing is being burnt up. But let's just look at this. Commerce is going to grind to a standstill. And they're going to stand back and say, The whole system's gone. What are we going to do? <clears throat> Mr. Greenspan, no problem. He's a Jew. Problem. I have to admit it. Because the Jews have the paper. He's looking now to control inflation. He's dabbling in the money market. Isn't going to work. Nothing's going to work. They're only going to make it worse. And the Jews have never learned the story of the rich young man. And they're never, ever going to lose, learn it because everything is money to them. And the Catholics have the gold. <clears throat> and the whole system grinds to a halt. And they stand there. The ships won't move. The trains won't move. The airplanes won't move. The escalators won't move. Nothing's moving. Pretty well, that would be the picture. <clears throat> Who's going to get it moving? The Pope with the gold. Yeah. Then commerce will take over 100%. The golden calf scheme will take over 100%. Now, I want you to notice something. <clears throat> Let's go back to the very beginning of the Bible. 
and I don't know if I can find it or not because I'm very poor at finding things. Oh, my, 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 my. Right at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Don't get bored, Norman. I can hear you yawning. <coughs> All right. <coughs> Here we are. In Genesis, the second chapter, verse 8, the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. There he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. And the tree of life also is the garden and the tree of knowledge of the good and evil. Now, listen, that's the man physical we're talking about. Now, the inner man was there too, but this is the old physical boy we're looking at. And a river went out of Eden to the water of the garden, and from hence it was parted and became into four heads. The name of the first is Pison, that is which compasses the whole land of Havilah, where there's gold. And the gold of that land is good. And there's bellium, delium, and onyx stone. Money, 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 money. Gold started at Eden, just outside. <clears throat> the head of gold was in Babylon. And communism, socialism, and democracy will have to exist till the very time Christ comes and destroys it all and will head up under the head of gold. Because let me tell you something, if the head's of gold, you better believe that's all the head is ever going to think and that is all it has ever thunk. Gold, gold, gold. When it talks, the lips are gold. When it hears, the tinkle of coins. When it sees, it bulges with the yellow gold. The eyeball spin, and the mind is a cash register. Yeah, gold. <clears throat> there you are. Can't change it, can't change it, can't change it. All right. The rich young ruler is what it's called. And many of the ministers here, my brethren, no doubt have approached it in many different ways, but I'm going to talk about leadership and having turned the corner. I see where this thing is going, and I want to try to approach it in a different way tonight than I ever have, and that's through leadership. Remember this, that each one of us, young or old, your first step that you ever made in your life, someone had to lead you. That's right. And your last step you'll ever make, someone will be leading you. <clears throat> there you are. You're not going to cross... Jordan alone. Remember the song, I don't have to cross Jordan alone. Jesus all died my sins to atone. I got news for you. It may not be Jesus going to tide you over. Yeah. I read my Bible a little different from what many people read theirs. I read mine as Brother Branham. <clears throat> I know you do the same. And someone's going to lead us across. Well, I'm going to tell you one thing. I've committed to whoever it is that brought this message, and I'm not talking about Brother Branham. I'm talking about God. <clears throat> That's all I have any hope in. Now, all right, someone has to lead us. The last one uh, is the one you gave over to, even if it is different from the one you thought you were dealing with. Woo! Did you hear what I said? Huh? Read it again. He said, <clears throat> first step you take, the last step. What if in this last step you take, and the last one is the one you gave over to, and that's the way it's going to be, but what if it's different from what you thought you were giving over to? This church, I cannot ask this question. <clears throat> oh, maybe one or two women sitting here, maybe one or two men, but I don't know if it's a fair question because <clears throat> I think we're all pretty <clears throat> reconciled and happily married. But isn't it the truth? That in most cases, the man, the woman thought she married was not that man. And the man married a woman he thought he married and she was not that woman. That's why Brother Brandon said you'll get the right one over there. <clears throat> and that's perfect compatibility. 
That's all it is. Nothing to do with anything else. And if he had two wives, one dead, and both like Brother Branham, no problem. Just go hand in hand in that beautiful Eden land. Because that's all there is. Amen. Compatibility. Do you realize he didn't even recognize his own daughter that went there as a tiny baby and she was fully grown? My, what a wonderful time to get acquainted. You say, Brother Vale, I don't know. Well, I do know. This is where you're finally going to live because the guy inside for the first time is going to be comfortable. Because all the five senses are coordinated to the other five senses of the soul within the inner man. Yeah. You'll really love people then. <clears throat> you really love to have conversation. You really love to work. You really love to get to know. And you really love to eat, which is certainly good, because my, I wouldn't want to miss that for anything. <clears throat> Someone to lead. So you understand what I'm saying here? That last one to lead us could be not what we think. <clears throat> How about you reached into a box sometime and you thought you were pulling up something and hey, they got the wrong thing. Haven't you taken something off the shelf and gone home with it? It was the wrong thing? I've done it. I bought a car and hated it. <laughs> but you know, this last committal, you know what? I'm going to be honest with you. I just don't think I'm worthy of it. That's all. This is so tremendous and so great. If I can even poke my nose in, boy, how lucky can I get? See? <clears throat> now, God's likened us to sheep. And if anyone knows about raising sheep and the nature of sheep, why, you know that a sheep cannot find his, his way around. Oh, these businessmen say, we can find our way around. Bless God, we're prospered. We know how to do things. Wouldn't you like to do things with them? I shouldn't talk like this. So I'm going to do it anyway. Because I like doing things I shouldn't do. I'm just kidding. You know that. <clears throat> he has to be led. Now watch. Even in the slaughter pens, we find they bring the sheep there, and the sheep are led to the slaughter by a goat. A goat leads him up, or them up. Then when the goat gets up to the end of the chute, he jumps out, and the sheep go right to the slaughter. We find the sheep can't find his way around. <clears throat> now, Brother Branham knows we're called sheep. Yeah. Now, leadership. What if William Branham... <clears throat> is trying to lead sheep, and he leads them astray. What about these Pentecostal leaders of whom Duplessis just loved to be with them to get the money to run around and get to meet the Pope? A Pentecostal did more for ecumenism, I believe, than anybody ever did. <clears throat> He's the one that got the Catholics reading the Bible. But to what avail if you read it? in 1 Corinthians 3 and think it's purgatory. But what a relief when you find out there's no purgatory. But what an unrelief when you find you go straight to hell. <laughs> <clears throat> so who's leading who? Yeah. We can kind of make light of these things, but brother, sister, I'm going to tell you, it's very, very serious. <clears throat> these people don't know. And evidently, there's nothing in there for them to know, and they can acquiesce to this and say, yes, isn't it great that we're leading these sheep? I remember an experience I had with one one time. That's a little sheep. I was state game warden in Indiana, and I'd been out in the field, and I heard something most pitiful cry. It was a little lamb. He'd lost his mama. And he couldn't find his way to her. And the mother couldn't find her way to the little lamb. And I picked the little fellow up, and how quiet he laid against me. And I went along there, my hands holding the little fellow and crying, and I heard him how he just, he was crying before he seen me, he just snuggled his head down against me and seemed like he knew that I was going to help him. <clears throat> well, well, well. 
So Brother Branham preached to the women about their short hair and their ungodly clothes, and they laughed him to scorn. Yeah. Poor little sheep have lost our way. Blah, 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 blah. They just blab right back. It wasn't blah, blah. It was blah, blah. And they didn't consider they were lost. <clears throat> I was never in a meeting. I've told you more than once. Never in a meeting so disgusted and disturbed as I was that time. Belshazzar's feast. The kingdom's gone. Nah. Give this man one-third of the kingdom. Put a gold chain on his neck. Elevate him. There wasn't any kingdom to give away. It was gone. Daniel didn't want any gold chain any more than I want one. If I did, give me, give me one and give him my wife. I don't think she wanted either. <clears throat> Look at, see? Please think what's going on in this end time. What happened 29 years ago? Coming right up. <clears throat> now, our attitude in devotion, <clears throat> in a real heartfelt, simplistic love, but also motivated by the love of God should be to William Branham. I admit I've never loved anybody like I've loved him. He could have had my life any time he wanted. I mean, that wouldn't bother me to die. It would have been a pleasure, a privilege. And I think that ought to be the way with everybody, and yet they didn't like him because just like Jesus and every prophet, he did not agree with what they said. And so we're right back to the point. Well, William Branham, we aren't against you because you said, thus saith the Lord. And we saw that little girl on the Mexican border. I've told you before about her. Brother Branham, <clears throat> unwittingly, <clears throat> played into the hands of the enemy, knowing his gift. He said, I challenge you, bring me the worst case you can lay your hands on. I guarantee healing. <clears throat> well, they did it. They brought a little Mexican girl. And the best I can describe her according to what I heard, I was not there. She would look like a cold dish of cooked spaghetti. The arms and everything interwoven. <clears throat> he took her on his knee. She's about 12 years of age, skin and bone, I guess. He said, you people just pray and I will pray. Within two hours, she jumped off of his knee, 100% whole flesh on her body. The place went wild. And God took him aside and said, you did exactly wrong. But why, Lord? Now everybody will want that, and you can't do it. <clears throat> well, yeah. This man was ordained a leader to take us through this age. And he likened us to the little lambs that he's trying to help and eat. And I thought, O rock of ages, cleft for me, pick me up in the arms of the Lord Jesus. <clears throat> Do you know that Charles Wesley one day was <clears throat> on the seashore? And there was quite a strong wind. Clouds were up there. And suddenly, a little dove being chased by a hawk, a falcon, rushed down from the sky <clears throat> and quickly fled into his jacket. And the hawk turned. And John West, Charles Wesley wrote, Rock of Ages, cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee while the near waters roll, while the tempest still is high. Hide me, O oh my Savior, hide, till the storm of life is past. Safely to thy haven guide, O oh, receive my soul at last. Just the same, but it was a dove. It was not a sheep. Rock of ages, cleft me, pick me up in the arms of the Lord Jesus, and just be content, as I know I'm going to go home to be with my loved ones. He knew his death was coming. You can tell by these sermons. And I thought, at the end of my life's journey, just bring me to your arms, Lord, like that, that I know I'll be carried across the river then, 
Someone lead me over. They're on the other side where there'll be no sorrows and sickness and things, and I'll be with the loved ones that I've loved. <clears throat> so there you are. We owe this message to Brother Branham, and he owed it to God. And he never made any claims for himself, <clears throat> but he's telling the importance of the message and how he is the one that brings it, as we read many times, I was just one standing there, just a voice to use. And if you study nature, there's a great understanding to be found in nature. Everything to look at. God's made it. He's the author of nature. Nature runs in continuity. All nature runs about the same. You notice everything. As I've said, I believe last evening, that nature testifies of God. If you never had a Bible, you could still watch nature <clears throat> and know that this Bible is the truth. That's true uh, to a very... But I, I, I realize when he made that statement, he was not bypassing for one minute the fact that to really know God, you had to know God by himself telling us who he is, what he is, his nature, who we are according to him, what we can expect from him, and what he'd like from us. You've got to realize that. <clears throat> now, you can't just get that from nature. But nature will cause you to start seeking. And when you do, you'll have to come right to this Bible. Nothing else. He talks about the Koran, everything else. Nothing but this word. So that's what he's saying right here. <clears throat> you'll end up with the Bible. See, nature testifying, nothing else will bring you it but this wonderful revealed word of God that God stands behind. Now, I'm going to quit here because, hey, I know only too well the time's run out. <clears throat> what, what, 10 minutes left or something? <clears throat> Five? Oh, did better than I thought. All right, <clears throat> we can start next Sunday, and we maybe can go a little more rapidly. I don't know. So let's stand and be dismissed. Heavenly Father, again, we want to thank you for the time we've been together here, going into this scripture slowly and uh, hopefully, uh, not only word by word, but with the actual thought of the word, <coughs> what is contained therein, <coughs> according to what the prophet wanted us to have, uh, which we believe, Lord, that uh, we are day by day, uh, coming into more of an understanding of revelation, <clears throat> more and more word upon word, until by your, by your grace and divine decree, grace and truth coming together, we'll be more and more filled with the Holy Spirit until we are full of the Holy Spirit. And, oh God, don't let our minds falter for one minute as we consider what Brother Branham said that we could be like a living statue unto God, where God himself is moving in, through us, in us and through us. Not, Lord, as it was with Brother Branham or Jesus and these men, Lord, that we know were foreordained, but our, in our own capacity, the place that you put us. Surely, Lord, we can come to that place and not be uh, foolish <clears throat> with thinking that we are able to uh, do things that think things and say things that are not 100% with the Word. But, Lord, because having our goal and our line, that great tie post with this irrevocable, vindicated Word coming to pass, having come to pass, yet coming to pass, never failing, then we know, Lord, we are part and parcel of it. Bone of bone, flesh of flesh, <clears throat> the life in us. May we come to that, Lord. And as I said, Lord, may we not think as we look at the prospect of being that type of a person and a bride as was set forth by this vindicated man, Brother Branham, prophet of God whom we dearly love. Now, Lord, we just pray that that same spirit in the proper measure upon all of us lead, guide, and direct us into this beautiful 
era in which we're stepping into this beautiful end time, being led across that river by the great leader. Even as your own prophet said, the pillar of fire is our Joshua leading us into the millennium. To do that, we know he must raise the dead and these other things that are consequential. Heal the sick amongst us, Lord. Help us to have a real strong outpouring of the measure of faith, real ardent attachment to it, and it to us, Lord, in all things, progressing and going on, growing up into that head which is Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Take the name of Jesus with you.